Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to make a auger bit holder for my new wood owl auger bits. The problem is these have a few things that I like or don't like and uh, we want to do something a little bit, uh, well, different. So let's dive in, take a look at this beast. Okay, I did it. I pulled the trigger. Um, I love these auger bits so much that I decided to go and get all of them. And I got all the sizes from inch and a half all the way down to the bottom. And uh, this makes me very, very happy because if you ever had a chance to use a wood owl bit, they are incredibly efficient and run very, very, very smoothly. The problem is um, my holders don't aren't, don't fit them all in there, um, as well as all of these auger bits are the exact same length as opposed to traditional auger bits that are varying length. Um, so I need something a little bit different. And so I played with a whole bunch of different designs. And I finally came up with this, just having a, 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 a holder that puts all the bottoms into it so that I can at any time pull out any one of them. But then I also want to travel, so I want to be able to close them up. And so I want to protect all of the, the tips and spurs on them. So what we're going to do is make a base on here that we can then drill holes into okay. and all of these bottoms can sink down into it. But we need to figure out how far apart to space them. And I wanted to keep them with an even spacing between the auger bits, and that means there needs to be a progressive shrinking space um, from bit to bit. And so what I did is I just put one on here, and I held one in, and then I rotated the other one. And each one I used the tip to mark where the next one was. Once I made it large enough, then I drew a line, and we're just going to cut the board down to that size. And that's really the, the way I used to figure it out. Now, I, I could have gone through math and actually go through and figure out how, uh, what all the measurements are and what the centers should be, but I found just the spacing on there worked out pretty well. Now, I want to drill a hole that the, uh, the base will slide into but be very solid. I don't want to wobble around, so I had to drill a couple test holes until I found the right one for it. And, uh, yeah, let's say it was this one. <laughs> so now that I have all of these holes marked on the bottom, we're going to come back through and drill them all out just so the tip comes through on the other side then flip the board around and have the, uh, the, the coming from the other side. Yes, you can still put the ring on this to make sure you are drilling nice and level. Um, that way you can tell you are drilling level. If you're drilling up or down, uh, the ring will slide from one end to the other. So we can fit all of these in here, make sure that they're all exactly what I want. And I was very happy with how they, how they all came out on there. Now, I was originally planning on making a top that would go on there and then fit each of these. So I was going to drill one hole larger than its size. Uh, but after drilling a few of them and playing around with it, it just didn't work out. And I wanted something that would actually go down around the whole top of the auger bit. And after actually playing with it, it just wasn't quite going to function. So I decided to cut apart the base and then uh, rethink the top. And it was somewhere around here I realized, wait, I, there's, no there's no reason for me to completely enclose the top. I just need to hold the, the snail at the top, the screw, so that I can keep them from moving around and then lock them together. So I'm actually going to use this to then lay out lines and what the top will be um, so that I can transfer those to the new block. So after cutting this all to size, we can plane it down and bring it right back down to our lines and get it close to the size we want to. Yeah, this is actually before I made the shooting board, so um, yeah, I'm having to do this by hand. <laughs> Now I have this extra scrap of walnut, and yes, this big block is a scrap. Um, I bought it out of a scrap bin at a, uh, a furniture, um, uh, actually a cabinet shop, not a furniture shop. And I've been whittling it down for a while. I made my, my, my vice jaws out of it. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is the same size as the, the, the base that I just made. And then we're going to resaw this down and make it the bottom of the base and then also the top. So after cutting it to approximately the same size as the piece we drilled all the holes in, now we can plane it all down and smooth it out, get rid of the saw marks, um, and make sure we get a couple square edges on this. And once it is square and ready to go, uh, then we can resaw this down. And we'll resaw it in two thirds and one third. Um, that way I have a thinner piece to go in the bottom and I kind of get that, that fit and color of the walnut on the very top and the very bottom, but then the white oak in between. And uh, just an interesting idea. So um, the, the frame saw really is over, over, overkill on this to resaw this down. There's no reason that you need this, but since I have a frame saw, I might as well use it. <laughs> and if you haven't seen how to resaw, I have several videos on how to do it with just a handsaw. Um, but I have made several frame saws over the years and they just make this so much easier. They make it very fast and efficient and they allow you to get your whole body into it. 
So there we have our bottom of the bottom and our new top. We need to plane them down because we're going to then mate this with that block that we drilled all the holes in. And I'm using my low angle because it was already there on the bench from doing the ingrain. And it's just easier to use one than going back and forth. So you can see how this will then get clamped on there. Make sure we schmoo enough glue on there um, to connect it. I'm actually using the new uh, four quarters glue. Uh, you can get that at uh, uh, Tools for Working Wood. It's a, it's a nice glue, it's a fast set, so you can put it on there, clamp it up, and then come back a few minutes later. Uh, not a few minutes, but about 20, 30 minutes, and have it functional so you can you can plane it and do more. So I'm gonna put a few hand screw clamps on here. If you ever used hand screw clamps, they are phenomenal, and I have so many in the shop because I, I use them constantly. Now we can, uh, while that's gluing up, we're going to move on to the top piece. I'm gonna use the other chunk of the walnut that I have left over. Uh, this is around, uh, eh, just over an inch thick. It's, it's not terribly thick. It's about an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, something like that. But we're going to smooth it all down and get it close to the size we want. Um, I want to put a couple screws into the end of it to then hold on to some leather straps. And so for that I have some uh, brass uh, thumb screws that are actually going to be what holds it. And then I want to put in some threaded uh, taps into the ends. So once I get it smooth, we can then play with getting the threaded tap in because you have to drill a precise hole that the threaded tap will fit down into. So I had to play with getting the right auger um, to make sure I'm getting the right hole. So we're going to find the center on the end here. And you can do that by marking center or close to what you guess and then putting the marking gauge on the other side and you can get two points and find out what's close between those. So we'll drill out the hole and then we can put in the threaded tap. And so this is a tap that I can put in that then gives me machine threads um, and I can actually put this thumb screw in and out. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the thumb screw as, um, as the holder for the leather. So I needed to wrench it in a good bit farther, so I wrapped some tape around it um, just to protect it so I can put the, the vice grips on there. Um, I, I think on the next one, I just used the vice rather than the vice grips um, because it was a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppy on that, uh, that first one. So for the leather, um, I'm gonna get something a little bit better here, but for right now, I have this really coarse uh, vegetable tan leather and it is a it's a nice leather but it's not exactly what I want and I want to get something that's cleaned up and, and do some of the edges on it but I don't have that right now so we're just gonna use this so I'm gonna chamfer the corners and then put a slit on it that then fits into that thumb screw and this will give me a strap on either end of the top that can then come down and connect onto the bottom and I left those straps longer than they need to be so that I can trim them off so now that we have those screws on, we can detail the top. And that just means chamfers. Yay, chamfers. <laughs> um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> so we can uh, put chamfers all the way around this thing, and then we are ready to start doing some detailing. Oh, yeah, the, the brass inserts were sticking up just a little bit, so I used a file, and I used that as the chance to then smooth off the end grain. Uh, so there's very little as amazing as an end grain that has been cleaned up with a, with a good file. So now that this is all detailed, uh, we're going to move back on to the bottom because that is still in clamps. We want to take it apart and plane it up. I left the walnut a little bit larger uh, so that I have something to work with. Um, and then once we plane it back down to rough size, then we have something more we can work with. On the end grain as well, planing into the wood as opposed to letting it run off so I don't get any tear out. We're going to chamfer the top edge, the bottom edge, and the corners because I like chamfers. And if you're doing the end grain, just make sure you skew the plane so in effect you're actually running the plane off the end grain. On the bottom, I'm just easing over the corner with a very, very light chamfer. So this is the base that they will all go into, but we also need to put a screw into the end of these for the leather to go into. So it's the exact same thing we did before, um, boring down so that we can then put in that. Uh, I found that the, the auger I had was just a little bit too small to really get a nice tight fit. So I stuck a, a rat tail file in there and opened it up just a little bit. And that allows me to get one in and then get the other end in. And now we want to make marks on the top with all the bits exactly where they want. So we're gonna put all of the bits in place, set the top on, line it up, make sure that it's square with the bottom, and then give it a little tap tap. And this will put a mark from all of the auger bits into the bottom. Now I wanna actually make these to hold the the screws rather than making them loose. I just don't want the, the tips sticking in. I want this, the tips to actually hold on to something. So I'm going to get the smallest bit and run that in just a little bit so that I get the shape of the snail poking in there. Then I can chamfer it back a little bit 
and that will actually hold the tip of it very nicely because it gives a spot for that snail to fit up in there without actually grabbing it. But it will hold on to it so that it's sitting on, um, on the spurs effectively. And you can see how that basically sits on there. So now we have these leather straps hanging off longer. We can pull it down and make some marks where they need to puncture through. Make sure not to slice your finger. Um, don't ask me how I know to say that. <laughs> but we'll create these little eyelets in the end and then chamfer the ends of the leather strap. Make sure that they fit on there nice and tight like. And we can make one match the other one and we'll have two straps, one for either side. Now I wasn't quite sure how this was going to be and I thought I might end up putting a strap on the front and back as well for traveling. But after playing with it for a while, I was like, wow, this actually really holds nicely. I was very, very surprised with how well it held together. Um, so for traveling, I can put this on there and, uh, and put it in my box and really not have any problem. And then when I need it, I can just set it on the bench and have all of my auger bits um, available and accessible. And so from 90% of the work, this top is not going to be on it and I can just have the bits easy to go. So after all that's done, we can get on to the finishing. And of course, this is the Wood by Right shop, so we're gonna use boiled linseed oil. Uh, this is homemade boiled linseed oil, that's why I'm using my hands on it. Uh, the store-bought stuff has um, um, dryers in it that you really don't wanna be sticking your hands into. Uh, but for the homemade stuff, it, it's perfectly fine for that. Actually, I might be doing a video here soon. I found a couple sources for uh, raw, or uh, uh, non, um, chemical boiled linseed oil, so that will be coming up here soon. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, so now we can actually take it for a test drive once it has had the boiled linseed oil and paste wax, put all the bits in, and uh, there you have it. We now have a bit holder that I can set on my bench or put on my shelf, and then I can strap it down in with leather and take it in on the trips. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit nicer for the leather straps, but uh, I like it. It's really exactly what I'm looking for, and I'm looking forward to using it for years to come. So I hope this gives you some ideas. If you want to make something like this and uh, dive into it, don't overthink it. Have a little bit of fun and enjoy your time in the shop because it's nice to have something to hold all of your bits. <laughs> So there you go. I wanted something that's easy to get in and out, something with a good solid tray so I can carry this around without any problem. Um, and if I do want to travel with it or anything like that, I can put a top on it, strap it down, and not have to worry about them rummaging around. And I, I, I like this design, especially with them all being the same height. Um, I thought about doing something like this as kind of cool, but with the stepped height, it really only works when the bits get longer and longer. And as you can see, the wood owls that I have are down inside here and they're a pain to get out of this. And if they're all the same height, having this step system just doesn't work quite as well. So I, I like this design. It's something that's kind of in between. Uh, for a lot of people who are asking about these, no, I didn't make these. This is actually something originally when you bought a set of augers, if you bought the whole set, then they would throw in a holder. And there's actually a third company that made these uh, for most of the different companies. Though there were a couple companies that made some that were specific to the particular brand that they were doing. These are fairly common for a lot of the, the smaller uh, auger bit makers. So I hope you like this design. Uh, I'm probably going to be making different straps. This just happens to be the leather I have in hand. I'd like to get something that looks a little better, so that's why I didn't, uh, didn't clean it up. But it goes on pretty nicely, and I am, I'm really, really happy with how this all came out. So love to hear your thoughts. What could I have done better? What would you think would be a, a better fit for that? Also, if you'd like to see the video on the wood owl bits, um, I've got that. I'll leave a link to that down below and explaining why I went with these because these are incredible bits that are just a lot of fun to use. One other thing we're doing is now I'm, I'm trying this out to see if you guys like this. I'm going to be selling small jars with wood curls from the particular projects. So if you'd like to, I'll have a small run of five or six of these jars from this project so you can actually buy the shavings that came from this. It's a small way of supporting the channel and uh, it's kind of an interesting way. Each one will come with a tag telling what uh, project it came from so you could actually have the wood curls from that project. So I hope you like that. Uh, I do also want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. As always, patrons on Patreon, members of the channel, people who click that join button are the reason that Wood by Right is still going. A huge thank you to that. Uh, everyone who's scrolling over the side, they're quite literally keeping the lights on in the shop. So I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. My auger bits are now very appropriate, and now they're topless. I've often thought a really good channel name would be the Topless Woodworker, so... Uh, Mm. Hey, hey. <laughs> I think that one takes a little too far. <laughs> uh -oh. um. <laughs>